In the southwest corner of Russia, on its border with Georgia and Azerbaijan, lies an area of steppe and mountains called the North Caucasus. This is a dramatically beautiful place, but since the late 1990s, after two wars in Chechnya, it has been plagued by an Islamist insurgency fighting Moscow's rule. In February 2011, I began a journey through five republics of the North Caucasus to report on why this guerrilla war keeps grinding on. I started here in Nalchik, the capital of the Republic of Kabardina Balkaria. Six years ago, in 2005, a group of Islamists launched an attack on police stations and military buildings in Nalchik, in which 142 people died. Many of the young attackers were captured, and 58 of them are now standing trial. This is Arsen Tukov, the father of one of the militants who died in the raid, and Larisa Dorogova, a lawyer who has represented some of the families of those on trial. Tukov insists he is sad that his son Anatoly and his friends took up arms against the state, but he believes they were forced to resort to jihad after they were persecuted for their beliefs. Dorogova and human rights activists say that before the attack on Nauchik, police sodomized the pious Muslims with bottles, shaved crosses on their heads and forced them to drink vodka. Such violence breeds only more radicalism. This is Nalchik's main mosque, whose imam was assassinated in December 2010 by the militants. They were angered by his opposition to Salafism, the conservative strain of Islam favoured by the extremists. And here is Tsatsa Tsipinova, the mother of Aslan Tsipinov, a Kabardian ethnographer and scholar who was shot dead by two militants outside his home at the end of December 2010. His crime, they said, was to promote what they called pagan customs, something forbidden as idolatry, according to Islamic diktats. Next on my trip, I visited North Ossetia, the mostly Christian Orthodox nation at the centre of the North Caucasus. Sadly, North Ossetia is best known abroad for the hostage crisis at Bislan School No. 1 in 2004. This is the blackened interior of the gymnasium, where hundreds of people died at the climax of the siege. Today, pictures of the victims line the walls of the gym. Here, Svetlana Tsgoeva visits the grave of her nine-year-old granddaughter, Zalina, one of the victims. I had imagined that the terrible events at Bislan would turn those who suffered into convinced pacifists. Instead, I found that people like Susanna Dudieva, the chairwoman of the Bislan Mothers Committee, seen here at the organization's offices, are hungry for vengeance. The relatives of the Islamists who carried out the attacks should be shot as a deterrent, Dudieva told me. Grieving women have been a constant during my trips to the North Caucasus over the last decade. The next republic on my itinerary this year was Ingushetia. In the town of Karabalak, I spoke to Dibekhan Pugoyeva, whose son Magamyat was a suspected rebel who was recently found dead after he was kidnapped by state security forces. From Ingushetia, I continued travelling east to Chechnya. Today, its capital, Grozny, is rebuilt a decade after it was destroyed when the Russian army launched aerial bombing raids and artillery strikes on the city. It even has an impressive new mosque, the biggest in Europe. Only a few soldiers are seen on the streets today. The guerrillas, once secular separatists but now convinced Islamists, are on the run in the southern mountains and rarely trouble Grozny. But there has been a price to pay for this shaky peace. Chechnya's Moscow-backed leader is Ramzan Kadyrov, a former rebel who switched sides. In exchange for suppressing the militants, Kadyrov has been given free reign to turn Chechnya into his own private fiefdom. Kadyrov even persuaded a group of Brazilian former soccer stars to come and play against him and other paunchy Chechen officials in Grozny in March 2011. Along with a personality cult comes a growing moral conservatism. Chechen women are ordered to wear headscarves. Last year there were several reports of Kadyrov's militia using paintball guns to shoot women whom they considered immodestly dressed. The final republic I visited on my journey was Dagestan, a mountainous region on the coast of the Caspian. Dagestan is the most violent of the North Caucasus republics, but one positive thing is happening here. This is a meeting of the Fighters' Rehabilitation Commission. It's a body set up by the local government to help militants give up violence 
and readapts to a peaceful life. Critics say the Commission hasn't reeled in any big fish among the leaders of the insurgency. But after a sobering trip through five North Caucasus republics, I was glad to see even the slightest sign of a more imaginative approach to dowsing the conflict.